Hello class, I'm going to be doing my presentation on Jerome Bruner, who was a constructivist theorist. And let's just start out with his early years. He was born in, on October 1st, 1915 in New York. Um, he will be 100 this year, which is pretty cool. He received his bachelor's degree in psychology from Duke University. And he got his doctorate degree from Harvard. And he started as a professor of psychology at Harvard. And his first article that was published was in 1939, and he um, looked at the effect of the thymus, of thymus on a rat's behavior. And another cool little fact about Bruner is that he is still teaching today at New York University in the city, which is pretty cool. Um, he was part of something called the Cognitive Revolution. Um, he had been at the forefront of this in the 1960s, and it was a time where the idea of psychology changed to thinking about psychology related to the human condition. He uh, has been involved in many educational reforms, including the start of the Head Start program in the 60s, which is a pretty big reform that happened in education. Um, there are three important aspects of constructivism that Bruner focused on, which I'm going to be talking about today. Um, number one is representation, number two is spiral curriculum, and number three is discovery learning. So Bruner's modes of representation um, are the way in which information or knowledge are, sto are stored and encoded in memory. There is an inactive mode, an iconic mode, and a symbolic mode, and this little picture right here is a quick little overview of the different learning modes, but I'll talk about it a little bit more in depth to come. Uh, inactive is from when you were first born to about one years old, and you encode your uh, information by action-based and storing it in your memory. So this is like muscle memory, so a baby remembers to shake a rattle by just shaking it, and then when they, and if you actually take the rattle out of the baby's hand, they'll still do the action of shaking the rattle. This is called muscle memory. The iconic mode of representation is when you're about one to six years old, and the information is stored visually in the form of images. So this may explain why when we learn a new subject, it's also helpful to have diagrams or an illustration to go along with the content. This is why when you get a, a, a handbook on how to put together a bookcase or a desk, they give you pictures, not just words, because sometimes it's easier for us to visualize things. Um, the third mode of representation is symbolic, which goes from seven years old on. Um, this is when information is stored in the form of a code or symbol, which is like a language. Um, knowledge is primarily stored as words, mathematical symbols, etc. So this is when you learn something new and you're able to verbalize it and talk about it through language. So this is when you can read a novel and you are able to remember the novel, novel through the, your language. The importance of the modes of representation. Uh, I found this little cone pyramid shaped. So this talks about how the first level is inactive, the second is iconic, and the top is symbolic. And symbolic is the smallest little triangle because it's the last thing to be developed. Um, McLeod said that Bruner's constructivist theory suggests that it is effective when faced with new material to follow a progression from inactive to iconic to symbolic representation. This holds true even for adult learners. A true instructional designer, Bruner's work also suggests that a learner even of a very young age is capable of learning any new material so long as the instruction is organized appropriately in sharp contrast to the beliefs of Piaget and other stage theorists. So the second part of Bruner's constructivism is spiral curriculum. Um, in 1960, Bruner uh, wrote a book called The Process of Education, and in this text, he discusses that children are active learners who construct their own knowledge, which uh, is a big deal of why it's called constructivism, because you're actively constructing your own knowledge based on stuff you previously learned. Um, so, spiral curriculum is organized in a way in which teachers can build on previous years' knowledge. So, the student is continually building on prior knowledge, and, you know, that's when you start the new year and you say, okay, class, last year we talked about factoring polynomials, this year we're going to talking about factoring multiple polynomials, and we're going to go a little bit more in-depth into it. Um, this is actually where our common core learning standards are based off of. 
because everything that you learn in Common Core is based on something that you learned previously. The third aspect of constructivism that Bruner talks about is um, discovery learning. So this is when students facil facilitate their own learning and teachers refrain from teaching through rote learning, but instead need to facilitate, facilitate the learning process. This is done by giving students bits of information and having them organize the information on their own. So this is when you just give students a bunch of uh, pieces of important information that you're trying to teach them and you have them construct it in a way that makes sense to them. So they take your information and they put it in order. So this is instead of just, you know, giving a PowerPoint slide of step-by-step -step instruction, you instead give them all the information first and have them construct what they think it means. There are three, uh, there are four major aspects that need to be effective for a good theory of instruction. Number one is a predisposition, predisposition towards learning. Number two is the ways in which a body of knowledge can be structured so that it can be most readily grasped by the learner. And number three is the most effective sequences in which to present material. And number four is the nature and pacing of rewards and punishments. So these four things talk about, you know, you have to make sure your kids have a knowledge of, of how to learn. They uh, need to know, um, can, they need to know how their knowledge is structured so it can be readily grasped. And they also need to know, you also need to know how to, you know, sequence your material so they can learn it the best way. And they also, you also need to, you know, strategically place your reinforcements and punishments into your lectures. So you don't want to, you know, reinforce them too much and you don't want to do, use too much punishment because that won't be effective. So the last couple things I want you to do is um, just watch this quick educational video that Dr. Spoonover interviewed um, Jerome Bruner in 2011 and then this other quick short video of Dr. Spoonover interviewing Jerome Bruner in 2014. And the last thing is to take my very quick quiz on my presentation and below is a picture of Dr. Spinova with um, Jerome Bruner in 1999. And here are my references. Okay, thank you. Have a good one, guys.